Hello everybody, this is Anthony Bionis from Mission Star Podcast. And if you enjoy listening to us, not only on the on the website but also on iTunes, be sure to check us out on Stitcher as well. Stitcher is an iPhone, Android app, um, also on other smartphones. You can download for free. Um, and also registration is, is for free too. It's an app that you can listen to any podcast that is on there uh, without ever downloading a file. Uh, when you register with Stitcher, be sure to, to put in promo code Mission Start or Conover or both, and you get to uh, automatically be entered into a $100 um, uh, prize every every month from Stitcher. So be sure to check us out, support us, and we'll support you guys. Hello everybody, this is Anthony Bionis from Mission Start Podcast, and this is another episode of The Con Over. Um, it's been, I think, a little while. Um, well, let's take that back. No, we've been busy as a like, podcasting-wise, but anyway, aside from that. Um, yeah, we've been talking in the sides of heads, we just haven't been talking about the usual stuff. <laughs> exactly, and if you heard that voice, that's right, we have Jeremy, a.k.a. Black Fright, on with us for this podcast. Yep, Freight is back, and welcome back to the Conover, the only show that doesn't think you look fat in your crossplay. <laughs> Very well put. Um, and he's going to be with us tonight talking about Anime LA and his experience down there. Uh, but first, uh, how, how have you been? Like, I haven't, I've talked to you here and there, but I really kind of got a, a good gist of what you've been up to lately. I'm okay. I'm trying to get back in the swing of regular work because, as anyone knows, you spend time partying and relaxing during the holidays, and you have to get back in your work pattern. You go, how did I ever survive this? Uh, <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm eyeing a couple of things on the horizon. Um, I, I have to go to another meeting regarding Anime Los Angeles because, for those of you that don't know, I'm a staffer in the volunteers department. I was out there all weekend. So I have to see if I can hopefully make time to get out there. I may have a little bit of a conflict because the particular weekend is Super Bowl weekend, and I was already planning to be out of town in Northern California for uh, for an extended Super Bowl party with some bachelor friends of mine. Ooh, wow. So, uh, yeah, I'm I'm trying to figure out if I can make time or if I have to skip one or the other. Mm, gotcha, gotcha. Um, yeah, it kind of sucks, but... Uh... Football right now to me is kind of dead. It's just because you know my team lost. So uh, yeah, but yeah. You're out there in Sacramento. So I'm, I know, I'm I, sure. know. <laughs> I'm, I know. I know. and fans are wearing Kaepernick and Crabtree jerseys and. Yep. <sighs> I'll, I'll say this now. I think they have a good chance of winning the Super Bowl. So San Francisco. Yeah, a little off topic, people. I'm sorry if you're rolling your eyes in the back of your head. <laughs> it is a big thing of mine, and I'll be honest right now. Um, it's pretty amazing that the Vegas line has San Francisco going to Atlanta and still projected to win by three and a half. Wow. Yeah, for those who don't know, the home team automatically gets a three-point advantage, and that means that somebody thinks San Francisco is that much better. That's pretty awesome. They are really good. I, after watching that game and destroying my Packers, there's no, Atlanta has no answer for a Kaepernick. Anyway, well, or go ahead. Helps, my wife is a Saints fan, so last year she was in the same predicament of thinking, okay, they can go into San Francisco and do this, and San Francisco basically punched them in the nose and laughed. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but we're not here to talk about football as much as we love to. Um, <laughs> we're here to talk about Anime LA, and as you said before, you were a staffer um, there at the convention. Uh, yeah, so this is going to be a little unusual, people, because I'm going to try and keep my opinions based on my experiences instead of my overall, simply because, you know, I staff there, I like it, I, I will not lie, I really like working there, mm-hmm. so right. don't be afraid if I try and duck a couple things simply because it may not <laughs> be. Right, 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 I hear you, I hear you. Um, so, first of all, tell me, um, how was your fun experience there at Anime LA? It's it's honestly one of the most fun things I do throughout the year, regardless of the fact that I am working. Um, part of that has to do with the convention itself, because unlike a lot of conventions that focus on a lot of the commerce and the selling and trying to really get something in your hands, Anime Los Angeles is the social convention, in my opinion. Nice. It, it's 
It's where people get together for three days to do nothing more than let their freak flag fly. <laughs> awesome. And and I am in the volunteers department, which is as most people that go there know, it is typically a window where we help uh, you know send people who or send an extra hand to uh, departments or events and need somebody to watch the door for a little bit or mm-hmm. just to put something together. And I love people watching, so when I'm sitting in this window for uh, a lot of three days watching people go by, it is extremely fun for me. Nice. Yeah, it, it's pretty. It, it's pretty cool, especially because I because I hear that Anime LA is like one of the most um, popular conventions to start up the new year that people tend to go to, and I'm actually going to next year. Um, and um, it, I hear that there's a lot of um, it, it's a lot of good vibes coming out of that convention, and like a lot of people like to go there not only to do their thing, but like also hang out with uh, friends or, or or make friends there at the convention. Uh, yeah. It- it's not just that, but it manages to do things with a surprising amount of efficiency for such a small convention. Um, mm-hmm. it, it, take, it goes down in the Los Angeles uh, Airport Marriott, and it will until 2016, as we found out. Oh, I thought, uh, I thought, I thought, it, was, I thought it was like uh, at the convention center. No, it actually doesn't. It's never been in a convention center in my knowledge. It started out at the Van Nuys Airport. There is a hotel out there that was originally housing it. Mm-hmm. It moved up to the Marriott at a point I wasn't quite aware of because I wasn't tracking smaller conventions at that time. Right, right. And it's been based there since. And the hotel actually does take great pains to fulfill a lot of requests and think ahead of the convention needs. Mm-hmm. Uh, for, for example, convention gatherings usually take place on the pool deck out at the Marriott. Right, right. And basically... This year, what the Marriott decided to do was close down the pool deck to anybody not wearing an anime Los Angeles badge. Oh. They, they literally gave us run of the area. <laughs> wow. Um, yeah. Cool. That, I mean, uh, that, it's good to hear that they, they're making great strides to, uh, uh, to fulfill the, the cosplayers and also the, the convention goers' needs. Um, it's interesting. Oh. It's interesting. I thought I, sw- I swore like I thought anime LA and like all the an- an- LA conventions was like at the convention center the entire time. <laughs> uh, they're usually spread out in different locations. The smaller ones can be contained in single hotels. Uh, this one is. It started about nine years ago, and it was literally one of those things where people knew I was going to Anime Expo on a regular basis. Didn't really have any other places to be because back then I was just a consumer, mm. and. Axe was the end-all, be-all of conventions at the time. So every time someone invited me to a small party convention, I just kind of looked at him sideways and said, you know, I'm, I'm really not the party guy. I've never been the drinker. I've never been the drug doer. I, right, right. You know, when it comes to parties, I'm social and everything, but everyone relies on me to have memories as to what the hell happened. The <laughs> oh, man, I know. I, 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 I cannot... Uh... Uh, relate to you in so much, especially with Sack Anime I just went to. <laughs> I, I know, but it's it's one of those things where I come out with a lot of great stories, but even after I tell somebody what they did, they just kind of look at me through bleary eyes and go, I didn't do that. <laughs> I, I did, and don't do that on my shoes. <laughs> uh, good shit, good shit. Um, so, um, since you were there kind of observing uh, kind of the crowd and feel of it, um, what was the... Did you, by chance, did you, like, know what the numbers were for Anime LA for, for this year? Uh, over 4,000. Over 4,000. Nice. Which is pretty good for a single hotel convention, I think anybody can measure. Oh. Here's the deal, though. Mm. They hit the cap. They hit the cap for the hotel or for the... They hit an attendance cap for the convention. Oh, shit. So Last year they were dancing on it, if not hit it. Uh, this year they definitely hit it, even though they, they made extra room under the cap. Wow. Um, so I was reading some of the reactions online. It looks like the CEO is going to have a conversation with, uh, with the rest of the, the department heads and see about possibly lowering the cap back down to his previous level only because there was a bit of a crowding issue. Wow. Was it was, um, – let me try to think. So when, when it was um, you know, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, like uh, obviously I think Saturday would be the most crowded of the day. Oh, without a doubt, yeah. Was, was it was – it, uh, to the point where it was um, crowded to be a fire hazard type of crowded, or was it a manageable, people can still walk around crowded? It was more of a manageable crowding. That's, that's a good way to put it. It's Anime Los Angeles, it, it keeps you engaged. There's all kinds of stuff running up until about 2 in the morning to, for people to just do. So it's not as bad as you would picture. Mm. Oddly enough, mm. only when main events are starting or letting out do things get bad, and even then, people are either filing into rooms, filing into parties, 
or filing into events. So it, it really bleeds off rather quickly. There's just these bursts where you go, damn, where'd they all come from? <laughs> wow. Okay. All right. Um, interesting. Interesting. Uh, did you guys reach the cap level? Um, yeah. What do you think is going to happen, though? Do you think that they're going to move it to a... I mean, obviously, to a bigger venue, but do you think maybe um, they might think of moving it to the convention center, or maybe they're thinking of just getting, like, a bigger hotel? That's the hard question. Um, uh, those that know me know I have friends in um, in other conventions, including a couple... Uh, well, one big East Coast convention, and he related to me that the Marriott's tend to do a lot to keep things that make them money. And you would think that a convention that makes them money, they're going to try to keep us. So our options are basically, one, to try to find a larger venue, which would, you're right, it would probably be another hotel simply because 4000 hitting the cap is good, but it's not quite, if you hit the cap in a few years, it's hard to prove that you have the need for a convention center yet. Mm-hmm. Uh, so... Yeah, so that's option one is bigger is move to a bigger hotel. Option two is convention center. I don't think we're there. Option three all depends on the hotel because from what the guy told me, when Marriott uh, hotels are about to lose events, they will sometimes figure out ways to expand the hotels to cover the events. Was there any part of the hotel that was, like, uh, cut off? Or was was the hotels, like, in general for this for this anime LA, were they, were they all booked as far as, like, hotel-wise? Or... Uh, no, there were definitely still people walking around the lobby with that "what the hell is going on" expression. Mm-hmm. Um, on top of which, this is an airport hotel, so as you can imagine, there was the occasional flight crew. I think I saw a couple of JAL Airlines uh, flight crews looking around with that, you know, "oh my god, <laughs> here too" expression. Right, right, right. That... Um, but the hotel did go through great lengths to make sure that not only do we have the pool deck, this hotel has rooms of balconies that surround the pool deck. I'd say about three to four floors worth. Mm-hmm. They did their best to make sure all three to four floors were entirely us. Mm. Wow. And I don't, mean, I don't mean staffers. I mean convention goers. <laughs> wow. So if you look, you're at the pool deck, you're looking around at all the costumes and all the people sitting around, then you look up and you realize that, you know, a full metal alchemist and the Black Widow and a couple others are just staring back down at you and you wonder, <laughs> how. <laughs> This is this is the most weirdest this is the most weirdest stream of Oz. What the hell's going on? <laughs> I, I saw the occasional person, you know, regular person, wander down to the pool area with a towel and then turn around and. Just... <laughs> uh, awesome. Um, okay, so it's good to hear that they reached the cap level. Um, as far as like one's gonna have a next, we'll see. Um, now. I ask this every time, and I have to know, um, because, like, majority of anime conventions are pretty friendly, you know, as far as, like, you know, the people that go there. Um, yeah. Anime LA, is that, is, was there any cases where, uh, like, the, the overall people were, like, you know, bad to each other, or, like, you know, was there any incidents where, like, someone was being really stupid? Um, Not that I saw, um... There was a report that I saw in the feedback on cosplay.com that the uh, girl says that she was having some kind of trouble and was crying, and a couple staffers were laughing at her. Mm. This is the first I personally heard of it. Right, right. Um, I, I know that the CEO, he also checks out the, the boards, and he, he asked for a, a private message from the girl explaining the story. Mm. So, you, you know, he's very interactive and very concerned, and, of course, he wants to nip stuff like this in the bud. Right, definitely. Um, but like overall, the people there at Anime LA, like how were they? Like were they friendly? Were they like you know? It was everybody cool with each other. I mean, like just most most people I ran into were were very cool. Um, it, it's you know there there's the occasional bad egg in just about any group, but there was fewer than you would really expect for such an enclosed space. People are very good about not stepping on their toes, um, mm. and the vibe is so relaxed because there isn't that sense of you're about to get booted out if you do one thing out of line or, you know, there isn't a very, I can't say there isn't a rigid format. They, they do very well at keeping people so engaged that they're either so busy doing things or they're so busy partying that they really don't seem to have much time to get into trouble. Right, definitely. You know, I, I didn't hear word of any elevator parties or anything that ridiculous. Um, mm-hmm. There wasn't that story of you won't believe who woke up in the fountain. Uh, <laughs> You know, I didn't hear a whole lot about breakage. Um, you know, uh, people were generally really just nice to each other. I mean, 
uh, give you a good example. Uh, <laughs> I do not go to dances generally because I am a combination of socially awkward and socially defensive. <laughs> right, right. You know, when too many people get hyped up around me for some reason, I start bawling up my fists and wondering if I'm going to have to punch my way out. <laughs> so, yeah, as you can imagine, dances are just, they're a little beyond me as to what they do. Mm-hmm. Um, even though one of my, <laughs> even though one of my better family friends is actually a DJ. Oh, <laughs> awesome. Uh, yeah, if you guys get a chance, you know, he's also doing our intro and outro music lately, DJ Amaya. Mm-hmm. That's that's a friend of the family. Um, anyway, I was at the dance, and I was taking pictures, and I was zooming in on the DJs who looked like they were messing with each other and having a good time. Suddenly, there's this weird green aura around my lens as I'm looking through the reticle. So I put the camera, I, I lean the camera down so I can see what in the hell's going on. I realize there's these two small arms that are over my shoulders hooking one of those green glowing necklaces around my camera. <laughs> And as soon as they put it on, they disappear behind me. So I'm like, okay, that's weird. And you know, it, as soon as they disappear, I, I put my hand on the, the necklace. I take it off the lens. I get it about si- uh, two inches off before the same hand shoot back over my shoulders and hook it back around. <laughs> and I'm 5'8". I whirl around, and I'm staring at someone that looks like they're about 5'3", five, 5'4". Five, it's this girl. must be in her early 20s. I recognize her from the convention circuit, but I can't be sure and under the blue light. Mm-hmm. And she takes one step back and says, all right, now your camera's a green glowy camera. <laughs> so I see where this is going. So I just give her a quick hug and I said, how you doing? <laughs> and she leans in and says, I've seen you all over California. <laughs> oh. Like, oh, okay. And that's when this guy appears out of nowhere, unhooks the you know, he unsnaps the thing from around my uh, my camera lens, hooks it around her neck and says, you're doing this too often. Come on, let's go. Let's go. <laughs> uh, I, got, I was there with a bunch of people. I got home and told that story to my wife after I got home. And I just said, I think I was flirted with. And she said, oh, yeah, you were flirted with. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's too funny. Um, <laughs> so and believe it, that wasn't even the first adventure I had in that format that weekend. Nice. Um <laughs> So you do. So you went to the dance. Um, uh, how how was the dance? Um, like, uh, how how? Actually, let me first ask this. How long was the dance going on for? Uh, they went on until about three in the morning, starting at uh, eleven usually. Okay. The, re- no, the reason why I say this because I I, I just recorded a pod a Conover podcast about psych anime, and real quickly, uh, any people who, who listen to this uh, know where I'm going with. Um, Sack Anime had a dance too, um, mm-hmm. all three, all, oh, oh, actually, no, Friday and Saturday only, um, but they went from, like, 9.30 to 12.30, they didn't, they, or, or 10.30 to 12.30 on Saturday, it was only, okay, like, so they, they tried to get you guys out as soon as curfew was up, huh? Pretty much, like, it was only a three-hour dance, it was not, I wouldn't qualify much of it, it's like, it's, Okay, well, answer yeah. me this, because I did not go to Sack Anime, and I have not had a chance to review this one yet. Right, right, right. Um, from my understanding, the convention people were held in a hotel, but the convention itself was in the convention center across the street. Is that right? It was it was both. It, it I, was, was both. I, was, I was surprised because, like, the hotel is where people were staying at, but it also was part of the convention. And then the convention center is where they had majority of the big events, like the, 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 the big star panels, the, mas- the masquerade, the MV contest, uh, and okay. the dealers. So- Okay, so was the dance in the convention center or the hotel? Convention center. See, that may be where it happened because I'm sure the convention center didn't want to stay open late and pay people overtime. Yeah, that's my thinking too. That's, that's my thinking too. So, and that's the advantage that uh, Anime LA had here is is that they were all in one hotel. So as long as the hotel's cool, you know, we were able to do whatever we needed to late into the night. Right. We didn't have to send people across the street, so they weren't wandering the city. They're only wandering the hallways. Right. Definitely. So. It it, it kind of irks me to, 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 to kind of hear that. It's like, you know, Sack Anime, you know, that's, uh, yeah, I could use a, a longer dance. I mean. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, it, I got there at 11, 11.30, and if, for you people that asked, that wasn't because, no, I wasn't, I wasn't being antisocial. I get up generally at 6 in the morning for work, so that's how my body's wired. Mm-hmm. If I sleep until 7.30, that's a wonderful morning. <laughs> so when I'm up at 11, you know, I'm already bleary-eyed and having a little trouble seeing. Right, right, right. But uh, as I was wandering around, there was a, you know, the room was about half full, which for a dance only 15, 20 minutes in, I thought was a pretty good start. Mm-hmm. Uh, it had a couple of things that were going for it. You know, it had DJ Amaya and Sandman. Uh, Amaya himself has headlined Anime Expo dances before. Mm-hmm. Uh, 
they they had a group of DJs ready to go. Uh, they were all standing around talking. On the stage with the DJs, they had three girls in cosplay dancing. Really? Yes. I mean, I mean, like, were they were they there ded- being dedicated to dance, or were they like bringing people up to dance on stage? No, it was just the three of them dancing. As you can imagine, you know, there were people dancing with each other on the floor, but there was a few who were standing in front of these girls, you know, really trying to impress impress the cute cosplayers. You know what's funny? It's like the same shit happened at Sack Anime. <laughs> it wasn't three cosplayers. It was just like, like these two very uh, attractive young ladies. I'm being, I'm being, mm-hmm. I'm being polite. And they were, uh, they, were, they, were, they were pretty hot, and they were dancing on stage on both ends. Uh, yeah. It was, but, it was funny. <laughs> no, that's cool. But, I mean, the other thing that I really appreciate it is, you know, I don't do loud music in general. If I'm listening to something, it's half the time the music's in the background while I'm trying to do something else. Right, right. And walking into the dance, maybe it was because it was a hotel or maybe it was just me, but the music was turned down to a point where you could actually converse with a person next to you without screaming. That's great, actually. <laughs> that is, that is, I mean... But, but was it loud enough to say if you went up to the stage or to the dance floor that you could still, you know, it, dance? It, you know. it was loud enough that you felt confident dancing to it. You weren't mistaking the beat. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, Amaya came in about 15 minutes after I did, and I started taking pictures. So I started talking with him, and I could understand every word he said. That's, that's good to hear. Because, like, I mean, like, I don't mind, like, having, you know, dances, like, you know, be everybody into the music, you know, music blaring and all that stuff, and I, I don't mind that. I enjoy it. But like, yeah. if, it, if 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 it if you can ha- if you can put it to where like you can have it to where you can actually talk to somebody, um, and then also you know dance at the same time. Oh, yeah. That that's that's awesome. It's perfect. Oh yeah, it, it's better if you're not dancing with that fine chica and suddenly you go, "You're hot." I, I know. <laughs> no, I said you're hot. <laughs> what do you mean? What I've got? <laughs> dance. <laughs> man yeah that's oh that's so true <laughs> um that's good to hear um so uh what other things were you able to uh to check out or what did you observe when you were there uh i didn't make it to the masquerade because i had a combination of work issue uh, of work you know part of volunteers i got to make sure we have ushers for the event mm-hmm. and uh because i was going out to eat with a couple of friends um I was out of the pool deck quite a bit. I wandered into a panel of uh, a couple girls from England who were apparently part of a... I, I don't know... Well, they call it a cosplay group, but the girls themselves say it's just a group of friends that we, you know, happen to hit it big. Mm-hmm. Um, let me see. The rock band room was closed because the guy running it accidentally got sick just as the convention started. So oh, that, didn't... that sucks. Yeah, I went to the video game room for a little bit. I... Uh, you know, as you can imagine, as part of my work, I was backstage at main events for a little while. I went to the pirate rum party. <clears throat> I went to, and observed a couple dances. I was in the middle of the uh, Avengers Initiative gathering. Mm-hmm. Um, I actually wandered into a uh, private photo shoot on uh, Saturday night among a, bu- a few Marvel cosplayers. Oh, awesome. So I did a little bit of everything. And uh, Rin, I wish he was here because he did mention something very important that I missed in, in my own report is that even though it's called Anime Los Angeles, Mm -hmm. if you actually took a look around and saw what everyone was doing and talking about, the the anime part of the title almost doesn't apply. Yeah, that's what I heard, too. I heard it was more of a... Like, people were there just more to party than to, like, be an anime cosplay, or... It's not even just party. It's more like um, how some conventions take anime to a point of almost elitism... This just didn't seem to happen. You know, if you had an interest in My Little Pony and felt like doing it, you did it. If you had an interest in Pirates and felt like doing it, you did it. Mm. Okay. You know, this is just, <clears throat> it's more like a general nerd convention. I, hey, I'm cool with that. I mean, like, if, if, if you've seen what Dragon Con looks like, you know, it's, yeah. that's like, Dragon Con is like the omega of, like, everything nerd in that convention. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I wandered through the dealer's hall. I wandered through, um... Artist Alley, I went to the live band room. There were live bands playing during most of the day, mm-hmm. including uh, Johnny Young Vosh and I Shine, which I noticed some people at uh, SAC Anime said, why wasn't he back? <laughs> I know why. <laughs> yeah, he's, he went to a better convention, that's why. <laughs> well, I, I'm not going to split hairs and say better, but, you know, he was there. No, no, I, I, I can say that, that he probably went to the better one. But I, I've been to going to SAC Anime for a while, so I know what I'm talking about, kind of. <laughs> <laughs> but, um... Um, that's good to hear, though. Um, 
that, that's pretty cool to, cool to hear that. Like, it was just not strictly just anime, but, like, everybody doing their own thing uh, and all nerd-related, so that's yeah, cool. Well, let, let me ask you one question. Does SAC anime have ribbons? What do you mean? I'm going to take that as a no. Anime Los Angeles did something. I don't know when it started because I only started... I only went to uh, Anime Los Angeles in the last three years, and basically because somebody uh, heard I was interested in volunteering and immediately pimped me out as staff. Okay. Um, they have ribbons. Uh, what these are is they're, they're badge ribbons. They're one and three quarter by three inch ribbons. So they're these long, thin ribbons mm -hmm. that have all kinds of different phrases printed on them. Mm-hmm. This is one of those brilliant things that keeps them engaged and why this is such a social convention. There's all kinds of official ribbons all over the con for participating in different items. So some people take it as a point of pride to get as many ribbons as possible. Oh. How many there are. I just said these things are about one and three quarter inches tall, basically enough to stick on the next one and keep going. So the average showing amount was probably about an um, inch and a half to an inch. Mm -hmm. There is a special ribbon that people can get just for having ribbons that are over six foot three in total length. Wow. So well, it, it, is, is the benefit of having these ribbons just is more of like a... It, it's more of a nerd prestige thing. You know, I got more than you did. I've been everywhere. Ha ha ha. <laughs> and there's official ones and people have also spent money to make their own personal ones. So some people will leave we these weird cryptic clues all over the place as to how to get their particular ribbon. Uh, there's some that are traditional throughout the convention. There's some you get, it's like, you know, you can only get a volunteering ribbon by volunteering. Um, but there's others that are just plain fun and silly. It's like, um, what was it? I had heard that in the game room you could get a ribbon just by reciting the old Konami code. <laughs> and as I was handing out staff forms, you know, the lady just said, oh, thanks for that. And I said, is it really as easy to get a ribbon as up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, BA, select, start? <laughs> and she just me, handed me the white ribbon and said, you know, you're the first person that said that without backing up four times. I said, hey, hey, I'm old. <laughs> oh, you know, I just second ribbon right there at the desk for doing a uh, a fireball impression. Oh, that's so sick. You know, and you could get a third one by answering a game trivia question. You know, just... That's cool. You know, yeah, and there's all kinds of stuff like that. You know, taking part in the pirate rum party, you, you got a ribbon. Going to the midnight tea... Uh, uh, the Lolita Midnight Tea, was it? The, there was a Midnight uh, Tea thing going on? It was called Midnight Tea, but it didn't take place at midnight. It took place on the morning of uh, Sunday. Oh, okay. But it was, uh, that was something else. I wandered through, you know, there's pictures of it in the gallery. And believe it or not, it is something very refreshing among conventions because usually the tea events I've come across, they're gothic Lolita things. Mm-hmm. And most of the time, if you're trying to observe, you know, even some people in these gothic Lolita tea events will say, well, this is for us. So if you want to watch, fine, but we're not going to talk to you. Mm, okay. Uh, this is something different because it, it's a $25 ticket. Before that $25, you are served actual, like, Tazo tea from the hotel. <clears throat> you're sitting around with actual teacups and crumpets, having quiet conversations. There are candles lit. Uh, somebody, and I... It took, it's in the background of a couple of my photos. They actually glued together this House of Falling card, which is this real surreal thing and interesting to look at. Nice. And because it was actual tea, the whole room uh, smelled floral. It was relaxing. And I stood there getting this weird zen feeling. <laughs> that, is, that is so cool. Um, so you were able to pay 25 bucks, and you were able to take part in this, uh, in the, in the, in the, in this tea thing going on? Uh, no, I, I told them, look, I'm staff, I'm going to observe, and I handed my Mission Star podcast uh, card, and I said, I'm going to take a few photos, I will stay out of the way, I will not use Flash, Okay. and I, I just need to see so I can report for a website, and, you know, of course, my fellow staffer just kind of looked at me narrow and just said, don't use your Flash and keep quiet. Oh, yes, ma'am. <laughs> right, right, right. So that's the other thing that I, I think the staff kind of excels at, is that they allowed... They allow media a lot of access to the events, but at the same time, they're being very sure that they're not interrupting what everyone else is doing. Right, right. Huh. That's cool, though. I, I, I like the idea of going to a tea ceremony, drinking tea, you know, and just kind of uh, eating, you know, biscuits or whatnot in very social, relaxing setting. I love that idea. Um, I, should, I, should, I, I need to go to one of these, actually. <laughs> um uh, what was it? Okay, so, all right, you you talked a, a, a little bit about it, and you kind of been are beating around the bush, but I have to ask you, the the the, the party, the pirate rum party. Tell me, so, 
Okay, well, um, first of all, it, it's not quite as the name implies, because it's called a rum party. They serve faux rum. Oh. It's uh, it's tea and Coke, basically, is ah. your choices of what to drink. Okay. The idea of that is because, of course, you don't want to have a, a come and get blasted party, you know, with a bunch <laughs> of kids running around. Right, right, right. I hear you. I hear you. But the, the people that did it were smart because oh, for a night, they took over the autograph room. They set up these tents very similar to what you might see in a... <clears throat> You know, for lack of a better term, Pirates of the Caribbean film or like a period movie. Right, right. You know, they even covered the jugs that carried the Coke in these East uh, India trade, East India Trading Company, you know, barrels, which is really cool. Mm-hmm. And they had games of liars dice going on. They had games of cards, uh, and you could ante up by uh, tossing in these these fake gold coins. You know, you could get more by answering proper trivia questions or just entertaining the table. Hmm. Uh, they had dealers, you know, dressed up. They had one guy wandering around with a guitar, serenading at random. They had, <laughs> you know, and I, I, I'm not taking this literally, but she was dressed up like a harlot. She would stick up her leg, and you can try to toss rope hoops around it. For, <laughs> you know, they, had, they had a fortune reader in the back. Uh, Captain Jack himself was wandering around. You know, it, it was one of those weird things where I am not a pirate fan, and if I wasn't wandering around taking pictures and half tired, I, I could see myself sitting down and just playing you know, bullshitting for a while with these people. Mm-hmm. Because as you can see by some of the pictures, look, it's Ariel the Little Mermaid sitting around with, uh, you know, Edward from Full Metal Alchemist, and they're playing cards with a couple normal people, and this guy's yelling at them about their dice. This is so cool. <laughs> wow, that's cool. Now, the question, like, people who, who, who went there, um, even though there wasn't real rum, like, what are, were they, were they people just kind of faking it just because, like, I'm I'm totally drunk on coke and uh whatever is on is in here. <laughs> Not that I saw because everyone was just having so much fun, you know, going back and forth. Um, you know, the, everyone just had a lot of fun hanging out with each other, so I don't think anyone felt the need to to pretend to be drunk. Oh, okay, <laughs> awesome. Um, now, uh, la, 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 can I talk today? Um, what were the special... I can't answer that question. Yeah, go, go ahead. I said, I can't answer that question. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, what were the uh, special guests um, that uh, that were there for MLA? That's a little bit harder of a question for me to answer off the top of my head. Um, I'm going to cheat here and get the, the website. Mm-hmm. As, as you can imagine, because I'm so busy checking out the events and stuff, and because <clears throat> the times I'm not doing that, I'm stuck behind a window, I don't get to wander around a lot. Mm-hmm. You know, the the most notable one I could think of is Richard F. Card, not because I went to see him, but because he came by to see us and volunteers. He actually said, you guys are always working back here and you're stuck and you never get a chance to get anything autographed. You got anything for me to sign? Hmm. And there were three of us just kind of standing there flabbergasted going, uh, uh hi. <laughs> uh, uh, what, what have we got here? Uh, we have some abandoned reg packs. Get the books. Get the books. Mm. <laughs> He stood there and he signed one for each of us. It was really awesome of him to, to just do that for no reason. Nice. It's like, uh, it, oh yeah, he, he he wasn't brought by by his handler just for fun. I mean, his handler looked just as flabbergasted as the rest of us. Mm-hmm. You, know, you want to talk to the peons? What for? <laughs> awesome. You know, but uh, let's see. We had Mary Elizabeth McGlynn. Uh, she's a voice actor. Mr. F. Carr is also a voice actor. Uh, See, we even had we even had a fan guest of honor, Miss Mary Davis. That's cool. Uh, but you know, we had Johnny Young Bosch, we had uh, Patrick Seitz, Laura Post, uh, Kira Buckland. Mm-hmm. Basically, a lot of the names you'll you'll hear you won't hear a heck of a lot of large names in anime Los Angeles because half of our guests are often other fans or fan organizations. Right, right, right. That's cool, though. I mean, like, I mean, again, I'll bring up the comparison. Um. There's one thing that I, that I like about Psych Anime over here is that they somehow get the biggest names or like some big names always come to the convention. And this past weekend, or well, a week or two ago, um, they have brought um, I, the, the 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 main I think the main guest of honor was Kevin Conroy and mm-hmm. uh, you know, the voice of Batman, uh, the original Batman right. anime series that's a Psych Anime, and that was just like. Oh, that is awesome! And then you know um, they brought in you know the voice of Catwoman also as well, and they brought in a bunch of other voice actors too that were just like kind of big. It's like wow, that's awesome. Yeah, um, for my years at Anime Los Angeles, it seems like voice actors are the biggest types of talent uh, we generally get. But at the same time, it's just 
it's hard to say that the guests are really the focus when the focus is really the sociality of the convention. Oh, yeah. From what I've heard, yeah, it's more of the the social aspect to the convention than it is the, the panels or anything else. Yeah. I mean, a lot of conventions will keep you busy with um, events that force you to look at a stage or panels or you're sitting there listening to people and not a lot of interaction. It, it, it does seem like a lot of the events in Anime Los Angeles are more or less to get people to sit down at round tables instead and talk to each other. Hmm. Okay. That's cool, though. I like that. That's cool. If you if you, if you can find me somebody I can talk to at, like, 1 o'clock in the morning and be chill, that's awesome. <laughs> I, even, even the people I roomed with, you know, I roomed with one guy I met uh, at, by coincidence, via the PMX, um, two old, uh, three uh, old friends of mine and two brand new people. Mm. And a lot of the time we would sit around and uh, BS with each other during the times we weren't outside just because, you know, there was just... There's something about the convention that brings out this weird talkative animal in you. I I don't know how else to really explain it other than it brings out you. Yeah, it does. I, I, every anime convention I've been to, and also like uh, just in general, um, it gives you that very you know relaxed. Like you know, you could be you. You don't have to act a certain way. You don't have to dress normally. <laughs> Actually, the normal is a dressing cosplay. <laughs> <laughs> but like, you can be you, and you could you know walk up to a random stranger to start a conversation and it'll be okay. So, yeah, I, I, that's why I definitely what I love about anime conventions. Is it's just a very fun place to be, not only just to have fun, but also to have that social aspect as well. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm trying to think. So, uh, speaking of cosplays, was there anything that stood out to you when you were there uh, working the, the man hours of uh, Anime L.A.? Uh, one of the more standouts was something I've seen in the last couple of years. Somebody was dressed up as Toothless from How to Raise Your Dragon. <laughs> nice. And there was a lot of people that had to stop that particular individual for hugs or to get a closer look. Mm, gotcha. Um, <laughs> let's see. Um, you know, the more standout ones was a, kind of a personal experience thing because I have not made it a secret since I started working for you. I'm a comic book fan as much as I'm an anime fan. Mm-hmm. Right. And there was a pair of girls I saw early on that I managed to, to kind of luck into meeting who were dressed up as the current versions of both Captain Marvel and Spider-Woman. Nice. You know, t- two characters that I think in, in current com- in the current Marveldom are underappreciated. Oh, yeah. And, uh, you know, they were, uh, you know, in the beginning they were kind of affable and, uh, you know, uh, just... I'm trying to figure out the right words. They were okay to meet. You know, they weren't very interested in talking to the old guy. That's okay. Uh, these these are both younger ladies uh, in their early 20s. Mm. And uh, by the time the the Avengers Initiative gathering was over, I, I come pretty close to making a couple new friends. That's awesome. Um, you know, she didn't want to share her name for obvious reasons, uh, both in the report because she's trying to live a private life and because, you know, I wasn't going to fish for names of young girls. Right. Uh, of course, of course, that, that professionalism has to be there. <laughs> but, uh, you know, uh, there was this, the moment we really kind of bonded over was, uh, there was a heroes versus villains shoot for the Avengers initiative gathering. And like I said before, I'm five, eight, I am not overly tall compared to most Californians. Mm-hmm. And uh, at the, I ended up by accident at the back of the group. Which, <laughs> you know, just, I, it's just kind of a whatever for me. Right, right, right. And I happened to be standing next to the Captain Marvel, and you know, I, I just kind of had this moment of brilliance, and I, I just kind of said, "Come here!" And I, I put her thigh on my shoulder, I lifted her up. So suddenly, there's Captain Marvel floating at the back of this group. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, and so when they when they ca- when they did the ten count, I put her down, and she said, "That is the most awesome thing ever." <laughs> That's so sick. <laughs> um, I think I didn't quite know how to respond because I've always been kind of strong by comparison, and it's just oh, I, I, I wish it was that simple in high school. I really do. <laughs> a lot of things would have been a lot simpler in high school, but that's for that's for another uh, time and day. Um, yeah. But also, that is great to hear, and uh, I agree with you. I, I am too a big comic book fan, especially in Marvel. Uh, DC can suck it later, but um, yeah. ooh, ooh, ooh. Hey, I'm just saying. I'm just saying, Marvel's better. I know, uh, I'm just expecting angry letters later. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, DC fans. I'm just a more Marvel person than than I am anything else. Um, what was it? Uh, but um, that's great to hear. Uh, 
I think that cosplay gatherings in general are a lot of fun to, to go to. And anything really anime convention related is fun to go to. So I think that it's like it's, it's like compared to the two, kind of what the original people who made the original Halo was like that five seconds of fun. Like every five seconds in that game, you're always having fun doing something. And in an anime convention, especially for anime LA. It's, I think, the exam exact feeling where every five seconds you are doing something fun or you're having fun at the moment. Right, and uh, and you'd be surprised how often though anime and comic book fans, if they're fans of one or the other, mm-hmm. uh, they they have some weird acrimony against the other party, even though it's it's really the same kind of medium. Right, definitely, definitely. Um, I am curious because you were working the, the man hours of of the convention. Um, now. How were the lines, um, as far as like pre reg regular reg, um, how were the lines handled, and was it a long enough line to where people were, were waiting for uh, a good amount of time, or was it a very uh, smooth kind of people getting their badges and off they went? Well, pre reg on night zero it ran pretty quickly. Um, there, there never seemed to be more than about ten people in line because they had registration up and running and humming. Mm, okay. um, the following day, I actually knew one of the people in my party who had not registered, but he, he came to the convention. Mm-hmm. Uh, the line was out the door and up the walkway of the hotel. Mm. And by the time I had finished doing something, he was inside and registered. He went from the back of the line to register in about 15 minutes. Wow, that's really... That's, that's, that's pretty good. That's, that's yeah, pretty the, good. Registrations run very efficiently. Uh, Masquerade had the biggest line. Mm. Uh, it did wind through the hotel and out the door, or, or not the hotel, the uh, the ballroom floor, which is where they house most of the convention. Right, right. Uh, let me see. The anime music video line, I didn't witness it being that long, but I think the issue with that was because somebody had put it at 10 a.m. on Sunday. Mm. And Sunday was day three, final day, so as you imagine, a lot of people were busy with their cars and check out. Oh, yeah, definitely, definitely. Huh. So th- that wasn't what was expected. Uh, you know, other than that, there's not a lot of lines for a lot of other stuff because, as I said, it's very free-flowing and very of your interest. Mm-hmm. So there weren't a lot of lines, even though a lot of rooms tended to be to be rather full. Right, right. Hmm. Okay. Um, that, that, that's interesting to hear, uh, and good to hear, because like, you hear most anime conventions have problems, um, especially Fanime last year. Oof. That, that, was, that was a nightmare. Um, uh, I didn't find Fanime last year to be terrible, but then again, I uh, I didn't have any bands of my interest, so I skipped Music Fest. And I mean, it, it, not 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 as far as the AMV contest, but like as far as like as like the, the registration lines I'm talking about. Oh, the, well, yeah, registration and Fanime uh, were a little off topic, but this is by comparison, registration and Fanime is rather atrocious. Yeah, especially for especially last year because of the power going out like during pre reg. And they had to yeah. by hand. That was so bad. I, I mean, like, I mean, I can't complain because you know, I, I, you know, press, you know, has a an easier yeah. time getting badges. But like for everybody else, it was the line literally went from inside the convention center, outside, around, and and it curled like around the hotel. So it was actually side tangent convention story. You're gonna hate this. Hmm. I was at pre reg last year, and this is of course before you guys knew me. Right. Right. I was in the uh, just past the first bend of that line outside the area where they actually give out the badges, you know, the line inside. Uh-huh. Um, I waited there since about 11.30 in the morning, got through registration, was dead tired because I had driven, you know, six hours from Los Angeles in a van of eight people to get there. Uh-huh. Uh, I got my badge, went upstairs with a couple other guys. You know, they sat down and decided to play some stuff on the Xbox while I took a shower. Mm-hmm. I came out there watching TV, <clears throat> and, you know, I'm one of those people that I don't want to waste time at a convention. So I came out of the shower with, you know, my pants on, but I was still putting on a shirt. Mm-hmm. So I was putting on my, uh, my, my gray tank top when all of a sudden that's when the power goes out. Oh, shit. And I just remember looking around going... And if this was five minutes ago, you guys would have heard me screaming in that bathroom. <laughs> thinking this is a bad damn joke. Oh, just, just laughed at me. So I said, I wonder if this is the hotel. You know, we, we opened the window a crack. We heard, you know, we saw traffic lights and everything. So we just said, eh, this must not be a big deal. When, so I just said, so do we get dinner while we're waiting for power to come back? And Yeah. So we went down for an early dinner. 
get into the lobby of the convention center, oh, crap, this is a big deal. <laughs> there were people milling and muttering, and it was starting to get warm. They were unhappy, and I just remember looking at them, and uh, one of the guys said, so do we make a joke? And I said, no. <laughs> no, I don't want to get mobbed, man. Come on, let's leave. <laughs> yeah. We ended up walking to Ruby Sue's. We came back. The power was still out. A bunch of people sitting around. Fan May staff looked like they were getting ready to panic. Yeah, man. I... And we got back upstairs. We w we were only on the fourth floor. Uh -huh. So we took the stairs in the hotel. Mm -hmm. And as soon as we got back in the room and put our stuff down, we looked at each other and said, so what do we do now? And that's when you hear, boop. And you know, <laughs> the conditioner came back on. All the gear came back on. And I just said, well, Somebody likes us. <laughs> it was a good sign. It was a good omen. <laughs> yeah, meanwhile, everybody's handing out these shirts. I survived the blackout, and I'm looking at people Wait, going, wait, what? Seriously? Know. Somebody was giving those out? Yeah, the next day they printed up. I survived the Fanime blackout. Oh, my God. I wish I was there. Ah, I mean, I was there. I didn't know they were handing them out. Ah! Oh, yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> I credit the people of Fanime. That was smart to come up with that in such short notice. Oh, yeah, definitely. Wow, that's so cool. I didn't, I didn't know nothing about that. Yeah, I was I was there, and I missed it only by the graciousness that I am an over-planner. <laughs> <laughs> mm, good stuff. Um, but getting back to uh, Anime LA, um, so I, for you, how was the workload for you uh, working at Anime LA since um, you were on the other side, and um, most of the time when you go to conventions, you are the attendee and not the, uh, the helper in this sense. Yeah. Hello? Can you hear me? Hello? Yeah, your mic's kind of... Can you hear me now? Yeah, I hear you now. Okay, sorry. I, I have nervous hand disorder, so I was playing with my cable. Oh, okay, gotcha. All right. Um... But, uh, oh, don't worry, I'll edit it out. Um, okay. Well, to, to answer that question, um, this year volunteers ran much more smoothly than we expected, mm. uh, even compared to the last couple of years. Um, in, the, in the two years prior, I often stepped out behind the volunteers' desk because we just didn't have enough hands. And, again, I'm an early riser, so I was generally there half an hour before the window was supposed to open. <laughs> And it seemed like every time I was about to sit down and eat breakfast, somebody came by and said, we need a volunteer. And everyone stares at me because I'm, you know, not only am I there, but I'm fully awake. Mm, mm, okay. uh, last year, I barely had to come out from behind the window because we had such a great amount of fans who came by mm. and knew the volunteer job, knew what it required, and was more than willing to do what we needed them when we needed it. Mm. You know, uh, day one, we actually had to turn a group of people away and said, do you mind coming back in an hour? Because we just don't have anything for you to do. <laughs> and I, I think that's why Anime Los Angeles really sings, even though it's a very small convention. The, the fans are so invested in it because they're either making the parties better or they actually seem to be working to make the convention better. And it is just awesome. Nice. Awesome. Um, cool. That's great to hear. Um, it sounds like Anime LA was not only was it the cap at, at the at the peak of four thousand, but it seems like it has a, a resounding success. Uh, no hiccups, no anything of that nature. Oh uh, well, I mean the rock band room not not going up was a disappointment. Um, there's there's always hiccups. There's always things that go wrong. Mm -hmm. uh, but fortunately, I think they managed to to I don't want to say mitigate it, but they actively work to make it better. I mean, uh, how many conventions do you know where the CEO is actually visible during a large amount of the convention? No, nah, you don't. You don't see them out and and walking around or anything like that most of the time. <laughs> okay, you come to see me for Anime Los Angeles. Not a, I will show you around. The CEO could, would actually park himself at a couch across from volunteers during periods of all three days of the convention, and he would actually sit down with people, ask them questions, get their feedback. You know, answer uh, problems and, and or tell them how to how he could uh, or at least direct them on how to get things solved. He he was visible. Nice. You know, he wears this headband with a pair of barriers on it to make himself more distinguishable and easier to recognize. And he's even in the feedback section or the feedback thread in the Coastway.com forum addressing individual items he comes across. 
Nice. Awesome. You know, That's the guy cool. is engaged. Hmm. Awesome. Um, Rook, uh, I'm going to have two last, well, I'm going to ask like, maybe one last question, and then I'll, I'll probably ask one more just to kind of your overall thoughts on the convention. Um, there were, um, so you were just discussing, like, there were, uh, you know, certain rooms you weren't, uh, or there were rooms you weren't in with, yeah, blah, blah. There were, <laughs> there were places you wanted to go, but, um, you know, you were busy and, and uh, you, had, you had to do what you had to do. Right. Um, you, the video game room, you, did you check that out? Um. I did. I was in it for a little while. How, how was it? Like, how, how big was it? And how, how was it overall kind of just like, um. I guess feeling, or you know, as far as like you know, crowd meter goes. Well, it's it's smaller than other uh, conventions. You know, obviously it's smaller in scale. There's no way to really get around that. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, they have an interesting setup because in the middle of the room, that's where they have a large screen. Generally, with uh, I would say a Wii. It, it was one of those things that was set up and kind of dared people to come in and play Super Smash Brothers on it. Right. Right. Uh, there were several monitors around the room that had your Xboxes and everything. There weren't any throwback machines like there were at PMX or like uh, other larger conventions because there just isn't room for it. Mm -hmm. uh, however, at the back there was a, a DDR-specific machine set up and, and uh, a Connect was set up. Um, one of the things that really, I don't want to say set it apart, but it's kind of unusual, they actually had three working pa pachinko machines. Really? No way. They had those? Yeah. One of one of them was even the coveted uh, Evangelion Pachinko. Nice. So you, I mean, you got a ribbon just for playing that, and I, you know, I've never gotten into Pachinko because the rules are a little bit. Uh, well, I've just never bothered to learn. Mm-hmm. Right. But at the same time, it, it, there was somebody on all three machines at all times. I was in and out of the room. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow, that's so cool! You guys had a Pachinko machine, man. That is awesome. <laughs> oh no, three Pachinko machines. Oh, three. three Pachinko machines. Oh, shit. One was Ava, and the, uh, there's a picture, again, it, it's in the gallery, there's a picture of the three machines, but uh, they were all the current style uh, with a video background in the middle. One was Ava, oh, the other, I don't know what they were. shit. Damn, I'm jealous. <laughs> <laughs> that is awesome. I've, I've seen those before. Those look really cool. Wow. But uh, it's, it's, again, one of those advantages from being small is that, um, I mean, you see my pictures from the PMX. It seemed like it was kind of sparse in the video game room sometime. Mm -hmm. uh, you've been to Fanime. There's a lot of stuff going on. I mean, the machines are engaged, but it's so big, the room seems like it's not as active as it is. When you have such a small room and a limited number of machines, all of a sudden it seems like everyone is not, not fighting for a space, but at least in line or crowding around machines just seeing what's going on. So the place seems a lot more active, but it's definitely a lot more energetic. Right, right. Hmm. Awesome. Uh, that's really cool. Um, one last question for you. Um, uh, as far as, like, you've seen Anime LA kind of grow over the years, um, it, it, when, it, when, when you heard that it reached 4,000 people at cap level and just the amount of attendance have, have, have risen since then, um, what do you, do you... Do you think that maybe Anime LA is growing... Uh, to be a is is eventually going to become like like a big convention like Anime Expo or Fanime to that nature. Hmm. It has the potential. Um, I I won't argue that it doesn't have the potential because when you hit your cap, um, obviously your word of mouth is very strong. Mm -hmm. You know, just people going out, sitting at other conventions, and putting out a banner is not enough to bring people in. So there's. There's got to be enough of a positive feedback that people are still coming and they're flooding in the doors. Right, right, right. Last year they were near cap. This year they extended the cap and they hit the cap. Mm -hmm. um, I can say personally from checking badges at doors, you know, last year it was awkward enough when um, in the middle of Saturday I start seeing Sunday badges with the Sunday crossed out and Saturday written. <laughs> and if it wasn't for the fact that a group of them showed up, I was going to turn them away and say, you're not faking me out. <laughs> right, so, right. Um, I, I think the problem becomes is that if this grows, can you keep it, can you keep the vibe as it is? Will it still be the place where people get together and socialize and, and hang out with the other conventioneers if it grows to the point where you have to run across a large building to do so? That's a good point, yeah. That is a very good point. Um, and I said this was the last question. This is going to be the last, last question. Um, Oh, you can ask me a few, man. I'm, a, <laughs> I'm like your clock. 
Um, your overall, what, like, what do you what do you take away from this anime LA and just like your overall experience uh, from this past one since you were manning the boards um, and helping out uh, this time around? Uh. Well, uh, like I said, I didn't come into this as an attendee at all. My first year was two years ago staffing, and I have been ever since. And maybe it's just my department, or maybe it's, maybe it's the other staffers I work with, but I cannot believe that I have pretty much the most fun I have at a convention every year where I spend half my time behind a desk working. Hmm. Uh, it, it's astonishing and mind-boggling to say I know, and people are going to say, you're just kissing ass to get a better job there. I'm unpaid. You know, if I, if it wasn't fun, I wouldn't be doing it. Mm-hmm, definitely. That's kind of well, uh, that's kind of why we do our thing. <laughs> uh, but at the same time, the three years I've been there, I've watched it grow. And the odd thing is, you would think, even though a lot of the events are replayed year by year, that they would diminish in interest. They just seem to keep getting bigger. Uh, they've they've introduced a maid cafe that took over the executive floor on the top level of the hotel. Mm-hmm. The uh, the rum party, you know, the guy that organized it, Captain Jack, he's been doing it for about the last six, seven years. He's leaving it, and he's mm. leaving it in the hands of Lieutenant, so it's not over. Mm. Uh, th- they bring in more and more live bands, it seems like, every year. You know, the Masquerade, they have to have an overflow video room to handle the amount of people that want to see it. <laughs> you know, the school that gets closed off, if this gets much bigger, the hotel is going to have to dedicate itself for a weekend just to us, and it's an airport hotel. That's an insane thing to say. That is that is that is pretty insane. Wow. Um, you know, just real quickly, I, I keep asking questions because I'm just no, it, it's <laughs> fine. I'm curious to go, and you know, here I am. Your your magic doorway guide here. I mean, right, right, right. Um, real quickly, the maid cafe up in the top. Um, now was it the top maid cafe or like? They, you know, actually serve you drinks and uh, food and, and drinks um, and, you know, entertainment? Or was it the type where you uh, played with the maids, like, in, in, in various games and whatnot? A little from column A, a little from column B, depending on what time you were up there. But um, because they put it on the 18th floor this year, I mean, last year it was down on the first floor, so there weren't a heck of a lot of windows or ways to see out. Mm-hmm. Uh, this year, because they put it up on the executive floor, it's 18 floors up, about half a mile away from LAX with floor-to-ceiling windows. Mm. You can imagine when they open that up and all that bright light comes in there, you know, from the right angles, it does look like something straight out of a Shota, uh, Shota manga. Nice. Oh, awesome. So, okay, because, like, uh, my main complaint, I think, at least with the main, the, the main cafes I've been to, when it's all, only been, like, to the second anime and fan anime, is that... That they, it's, it's, it's not which one I expected, you know. I, I, I kind of expected that, I went to, went to one at Fanime, like, for the first time, and they actually served, you know, food and drinks and, and entertainment. I was like, oh, that, 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 I can dig this. This is pretty chill. But then, like, you know, I went to another one, like, at Sec Anime, and I was like, well, we're going to make you pay to have fun with the maids. So like, really? I mean, I mean, like, I mean, no, uh, you know, food or anything. It's like, nope. So, yeah. Yeah, well, I, um... I don't do maid cafes myself, and that's a personal choice. I, uh, there's nothing I think is demigrating about it, mm-hmm. but I'm like you. My first experience was the type of cafe where you uh, you pay a certain amount of money, you're sitting around playing board games with them, and, uh, you know, it sounds cute in practice, yeah. or in theory, I would say. Right. In practice, I get a little disturbed when somebody I don't know is looking at me with puppy dog eyes and calling me master. It, it doesn't work for me <laughs> in real life. Right, right, right. I mean... Um, so, yeah, this, the, the cafe, when I was up there, it had singing, dancing, and the maids were actually saying, you know, we like to be happy, we like to sing and dance, so we'd like it if you clap along. And right, right, right. Great for them. But there is something else that I forgot to mention that is along the same lines. Mm-hmm. Uh, the high school. There is a section of Anime Los Angeles, and I kid you not, I, I think it's ticketed, but it's a little different because you are put into a mock Japanese classroom what? <laughs> with other characters. So so they reenacted every, like, typical anime high school type of... Well, I mean, obviously it's in the hotel, and it's not, um, you know, it's not going to be perfect because the budget to, to recreate that, you know, you would rival probably a small TV show. Right. But at the same time, there was a place where you could just kind of 
pretend to go to high school with your other anime characters. Oh, that, okay, that's cool. I mean, like, I, I'm, I'm, I'm imagining in my, in my mind how that would work. Um, so are they, like, kind of just, like, role-playing just, like, the entire time? I, I don't know because, unfortunately, most of the sessions were during the periods I work. You know, it was a very daytime thing. Uh-huh. And, of course, like I said, I'm an early riser, so people were counting on me to be a volunteer during the, uh, the early morning and daytime hours. Right, right. So I have yet to experience it, let alone I, I want to observe it. There is something that seems very weird about this. You know, let's not bullshit here. This is a hobby that really does gravitate towards younger people. I just happen to have an inner child that I understand very <laughs> I do not want to be the bald guy in the back of the room going, "Yo, Miss Fowler." <laughs> right, right. I, I, I definitely hear you. So I think I'm, I'm still there in the young age. Just give me five years now. Yeah, you know, <laughs> I, I the other guys my age and older wandering around. I don't want to be that guy in the Metallica T-shirt with a bald top of the head and like you know long gray hair running down to his shoulders. Oh no, right, you know, right. there's a reason why I shave my head. I have more self-respect. <laughs> awesome. Um, okay. Um, yeah, that's it's all, it's all I was curious about. But, um, Jeremy, uh, as I let this burp out of my, my, my mouth for a minute, um, okay, I'm good now. Um, oh, I can smell that from here. <laughs> no, to give an example, um, at Fanime last year was when I talked about this convention with a few of my personal friends. They mm -hmm. decided not only to go because they wanted to see if this was worth the hype, they brought f six friends with them. Nice. You know, I helped them set up with rooms and everything. I barely saw them. By the time it was done, even the guys that were sick and couldn't see half the convention said this was the most fun they've ever had at a con, and they plan on coming back. Nice. Awesome. And I will be there next year. Um, yeah, it should be fun. I'm excited. And uh, it sounds from everything you're telling me that it is a great, uh, convention to start off the, the, the new year. Um, sweet. Um, it's a great way to kick in the winter, the winter anime season. There is no, there is no lie about that. Awesome. It's great to hear. Um, thank you, Jeremy, for joining me for this podcast to talk about anime alley. No problem. Um, uh, next convention on my slate is WonderCon in Anaheim. I won't be going for the whole weekend, but it will be a one day thing. Mm -hmm. It is, believed to be the last year that this convention will be in Southern California as they're still looking for a Northern California home. Yeah, wow, that's, that's interesting. Huh. Well, WonderCon is an offshoot of the same company that runs the San Diego Comic-Con. They've been trying... I don't know why they moved down to Southern California a year ago. Yeah, I mean, not, 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 not to, to expand the podcast a little bit more, but it's just like, it's... Yeah. I mean, like... Uh, uh, well, this year, the dates and the venues would not work out unless they wanted people to pay full hotel rate, so they decided to keep it in Anaheim one more year. I see. So, are they... So, what happened to the Moscato Convention Center? Like, what... It, I mean, like, it was being, it was being you know, uh, being uh, worked on to, 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 to be a better place for conventions and whatnot, but it's not... My understanding was the renovations on the convention center were complete, but there was already an event booked in the, the preferred hotels they wanted to use during the same weekend. Oh, uh, okay, gotcha, gotcha. They could not arrange a hotel block, so it was full rate or nothing. Okay, gotcha. Okay, all right, well, hopefully we'll see that we'll see a one other con back in San Francisco, because I, I kind of feel that San Francisco needs something. I mean, Yali Con's already down in Anaheim, moved there, um, and they, they have nothing else except for Trey Blossom Festival up here, so. Well, you guys are getting the Japan Expo this year. That is true. That is very true. Well, I had a conversation again with my East Coast friend. Uh, the target goal for this convention within two years is to 